um, my name is Leah Carlos. I'm a producer and composer of new music that um, often uses found sounds and recordings of acoustic instruments and manipulates them into new sounds and combinations. At the moment, anyway. I don't know what I'm going to do tomorrow, but that's what I did last year. Where does your accent come from? Australia. Yeah. And where do you live now? I live in Bedford, which is a town just north of London. Um, and I live there for no other purpose. I've got a job teaching at the college there. But it's close enough to London, so I can just say I live in London. Scratch that. I live in London. So how do people in London perceive the New York new music scene? Well, um, I don't know the general, like, you know, all the composers in London, how they perceive it, but certainly I can speak for myself and my friends, and we're really impressed by it, especially the composers coming out of Brooklyn at the moment, the New Amsterdam label. Um, and we just love all of that stuff because it, or at least to me, we just speak on behalf of other people, but to me, um, it just feels more musical and more intuitive and less austere and academic. Um, I quite like that, like rhythms and melodies and music I can listen to on my iPod. So. For your latest album, Feather Hammer, that came out last year, almost nothing was written on score. Can you develop this idea? Yeah, I really wanted to explore muscle memories and improvisation um, because I wanted it to be about me and about my background. Uh, so I had some loose ideas, little snippets of themes and things that I wanted to play. But I kind of left a lot of it to chance and recorded. Not only the, the music, the performance, but also the sounds around the performance. So I microphone up the pedal mechanics or the nails on the keyboard, things like that. And I'd use that, those sounds in a musical way somewhere else in the texture. Um, and yet it's definitely more about my personal language and how I grew up understanding music. So it's based a lot on chords and uh, sort of melodic hooks and things like that because I grew up uh, playing that kind of music and listening to that kind of music. Well, you recently said that you don't believe in jobs, is that true? Yeah, I think it, increasingly so um, because the music that I like, I don't perceive it to be in one genre or another. I just like it for whatever reason and, um, and certainly when I write music I don't think, oh, I'm going to write something that's electroacoustic, or I'm going to write something that's ambient now. I just write what I want, and maybe that's a selfish thing to do, but I just, if I like it, I'll write it, and then it's, if someone wants to put it in a pigeonhole, they can, but I really don't, don't give it much credence, I don't think it's that important these days. And certainly you see, like, some of my favourite artists, like Björk, um, I, I think she's a composer, you know, I don't think of her as a pop star. And uh, I could name loads of others, Sophia and Stevens, people like this, who um, I think they operate in all sorts of different levels and pull ideas from different camps and make something new, and that's what I want to do. Since the material on your last album was not written on the score, but more produced afterwards and uh, edited afterwards, you are now facing a challenge uh, presenting, presenting this music live. Uh, can you tell us more about this? Yeah, it, it was difficult. I had to recreate the recording in a live way, but the technology helps out, so I used Ableton, and I have this interface where I can uh, place sounds in a texture and recall them in time. So, so long as I've got the tempo and I have the time signature set, I can bring in elements of the texture in real time and they'll trigger and then I can play along. And I think the, that was just a time consuming exercise, transferring the recording into that. What was difficult was how do I play those pieces because I only improvised them the one time and I also had to relearn this music that I wrote, which was a really strange experience um, coming at it from a different angle. And I still, you know, every performance is slightly different because of that, because I just, the way it was made means that I've actually never really learned it properly in a definitive way. So, you know, I tend to explore and improvise in the live show as well. I think it's wonderful because it really gives a, a nice organic nature, you know, to your music. Uh, is improvisation really important for you, really central in your work, or was it something you experimented with for Fedanah? It's a part of my creative process that I can't deny. I've, 
whenever I have a musical idea, I, I always hop on the piano and, and improvise it out. And uh, it was only recently, in the last couple of years, when I looked into the creative practice of composers like Terry Riley, and I realised that they actually developed it as a discipline. They sit down and improvise every day uh, for an hour or two hours. And um, it, suddenly I realised that it's actually a legitimate part of the creative process. It's not just a crutch or, or something that I just rely on because I don't have ideas. And so since then I've kind of embraced it. And, um, and certainly that's what led to the Featherhammer idea, is sort of exploring why my hands reach for these shapes and why does my brain think to go to that note next and where does that come from. Um, I want to compose music other ways as well. Um, but for this project and for right now, it's just something that I quite like because it throws up um, my past and my background and all my experiences are all feeding into that. And I'm really interested in the idea of ideas filtering through a person. What do you think of the public transportation system in New York and Council of London? <laughs> it's confusing. You've got, for starters, you've got the same colour on different lines. So, you know, I'm used to the tube, so I'm like, oh, we'll just follow the other one. And uh, we got lost the other day. We ended up having to get out and catch a cab somewhere else. Oh, it was really confusing. Um, but, you know, it, you can get where you want to go. What I like about it is you've got um, loads of stops, which is great. Um, and you can hop out and walk to one quite easily. Yeah, that's true. So if it's you try to do this in London, you can walk four hours. If yeah. stops, it's just impossible in London, yeah. And I like how it's all grid system, you can't really, you know, some places you can get confused, but in London it's all just madness, but here in New York I tend to not be as lost as usual, I'm often lost, but not so much here.
I'm Leah Carlos and I carry kids.